Chapter 23 Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore whatsoever they bid you to observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen of men, for they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether it is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and, ye, and blind, for whether it is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mints, and anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Bacharias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I love this chapter because you see the Lord in full vigor, actually 
bear down in pure testimony upon the moral corruption of the individuals who are the false, phony, merciless leaders, morally corrupt leaders of the nation of Israel. He does, however, say something up front, which he says to the people, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And what that means is these people are the teachers right now, because Moses was a teacher. And whatever that they tell you to do that is in the law that the Lord gave to the children of Israel, that do. But don't do the kinds of traditional things, the kind of laws, the kind of stupid philosophies that the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes have created in order to put heavy burdens and grievous to be borne on top of you. That's got nothing to do with worshiping the Lord. That is their own tradition for their own stupid reasons, and you don't need to have any part of that. Verse 5, it says, They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. A phylactery was a small leather cube inside of which there were some scriptures written. And there you wore, if, as a Jew, you wore two of those. You still, They still do for morning prayer. And one of them is worn uh, with a leather strap around the forehead, so it's out the front of the forehead. And the other one is wrapped on a strap around the left arm, and they have those in morning prayers. And the scribes and the Pharisees would make their boxes much bigger than they needed to be as a show of hypocrisy. Oh, I am so righteous, mine is bigger than yours. And the borders of the garments were so that people would look at them. They had symbols on them and uh, to be emblematic of a certain amount of righteousness, certain amount of studiousness, that sort of stuff. It was all hypocrisy. They loved the uppermost rooms at feasts. In other words, they loved to get the best foods. They loved to have the primary seats, the, the most important places. You know, it's, it's like today you're going to a potluck dinner and, you know, if your pastor or, or whoever insists on being the first and taking the most, you've got somebody who's looking after themselves, not somebody who's looking after you. And this is what he's warning about. You know, these people that look after themselves aren't, don't have your best interests at heart. Get somebody else who's there. Don't, don't call people rabbi, rabbi, because these people love them. Oh, teacher, oh, teacher, oh, wise one, oh, wise one. Said, Be not called rabbi. Don't let people call yourself rabbi. But one is your master, even Christ, and all your brethren. You're supposed to all be brother, this, sister, that. That's just how it's supposed to be. Call no man your father upon the earth. So you don't have father this, father that. For one is your father, which is your father in heaven. Neither call your master, because you only have one master, and that's Christ. Verse 11, But he that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. And he goes through the scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, and scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, and all sorts of things that these people abuse in order to take advantage of. Here in verse 23 it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you pay tithes. So tithing is a righteous principle. And these people would make sure that they paid tithing of mint, which was spices, and anise, which is another spice, and cumin, which is another spice, which people would use very little of. So they make sure they pay the very smallest amount of the very smallest of things. But they will not do the matters of, they will not be honorable in matters of law and judgment and mercy and faith and righteousness. They will take advantage of everybody. They'll, they'll, it says they'll strain at a gnat. In other words, the small things are things that will cause them great difficulty, but they will be morally corrupt enough that it won't make any difference. If there's enough of an advantage to them, they will do whatever it is, regardless of how unrighteous it is. And that's what verse 24 is. Strain at a gnat means small things you will argue about forever till hell freezes over. But if it's, if it's anything unrighteous that you can take advantage of somebody else with, you don't care how what you have to accommodate or how much you have to adjust or how big the lie is, you'll take advantage of it. Basically says in verse 27, you look like whited sepulchers, which are indeed pure beautiful outside, but are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. And that is what he describes them as. And that's what these people were.